Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at another 100 card Brawl deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a black-green Land Matters deck featuring the Gidrock Monster as our commander, a 5-mana 6-6 six, six legendary Frog Horror with Death Touch saying at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the Gidrock Monster unless you sacrifice a land and you may play an additional land on each of your turns to make up for it and whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you get to draw a card. So the Gidrock Monster is this very weird card draw engine that cares about playing extra lands, sacrificing lands, and just in general using lands to your advantage. And to make sure we have enough lands to feed to the Gidrock Monster and enable our various synergies, we're playing 51 lands total, and that's not including any dual-faced cards. And by far the most important land in the deck is going to be Field of the Dead, which enters a battlefield tapped, and whenever Field of the Dead or another land enters a battlefield under our control, if we control seven or more lands with different names, we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And there's no shortage of lands with different names in the deck, because outside of our three regular and snow-covered basics in each color, we have all lands with different names. So the main challenge is going to be to find our Field of the Dead, to then generate an army of zombie tokens to take over the late game. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our creatures, where at one mana we've got Elvish Reclaimer, can be a 3-4 as long as we have three or more land cards in our graveyard, and for two mana we can tap the Reclaimer and sacrifice a land to search your library for any land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, so that's already a way for us to find our Field of the Dead. At 2 mana we've got Lotus Cobra, which generates extra mana with Landfall, which is very useful in a deck that can often play multiple lands per turn. And at 3 mana we've got even more creatures that let us play extra lands in the same turn, thanks to Azusa, letting us play 2 additional lands on each of our turns. We've got Dryad of Elysian Grove, which fixes our mana and lets us play 1 additional land each turn. And Wayward Swordtooth, a 5-5 with Ascend, so can only attack or block if we reach the City's Blessing with 10 or more permanents, and then lets us play 1 additional land on each of our turns. Then we've got Skewed Swarm as another landfall creature that generates a 1-1 insect token, and as soon as we have 6 or more lands, starts making copies of itself, so it can very quickly get out of hand. And Ramonap Excavator, also very important, lets us play lands from our graveyard. So once we start sacrificing our lands to the Gitrock monster, Excavator ensures that we have plenty of land drops available through the graveyard, also works very well with our fetch lands, and can potentially let us replay Feel of the Dead out of the graveyard if it somehow gets destroyed. And then at 4 mana, Oracle of Moldaya also lets us play an extra land each turn. We play with the top card of our library revealed, and we may play lands from the top of our library as well, so it can provide a ton of card advantage in this deck. And then Solemn Simulacrum helps us ramp by searching up a basic and draws a card when it dies. At 6 mana we've got Burning Rune Demon, a 6-6 flyer that will tutor up two different cards. Opponent can choose one of them to put into our hand, the other one goes into our graveyard. So that's another way to find Field of the Dead, as we can always search for Field plus a way to replay it out of the graveyard, or we can simply find two ways to tutor it up. And then we've got Ancient Green Warden as another way to replay lands out of our graveyard, a 5-7 with reach, and if a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So very synergistic with our various landfall creatures. And then we've got Ulvenwald Hydra, with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, also has reach, and when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for any land card to put on the battlefield tapped, so yet another way to find our Field of the Dead. And then we've got Vorinclax, a Voice of Hunger, 8 mana, 7, 6, a legendary Praetor with Trample, and whenever we tap a land for mana we can add 1 mana of any type that land produced, so essentially doubles up our mana, and whenever an opponent taps a land for mana that land is not going to untap during its controller's next untap step, so severely taxes the opponent's mana. Then taking a look at some of our non-creature spells, at one mana we've got a bit of creature interaction with Bloodchief's Thirst and Fatal Push, plenty of ways to enable Revolt in the deck. We've got Abundant Harvest as a nice cantrip to find lands or non-lands. At two mana Heartless Act as more spot removal. Explore lets us play an extra land and draw card. Into the North can help us ramp. Once upon a time we can cast for free if it's the first spell we cast and can help us find a land or creature in the top five. And then Wolf Willow Haven, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart and Mindstone are all two mana ramp cards, alongside Maze Mind Tome for a bit of card draw, and Nylea's Intervention can find up to X land cards, so that's another way to find Field of the Dead. At 3 mana we've got more ramp with Cultivate, and to grow from the ashes, 
Roiling Regrowth also a great synergy with a Gidrock monster, as we'll sacrifice a land to ramp, so you can potentially draw an extra card. Then we've got Maelstrom Pulse and Putrefy as versatile removal spells, and Crucible Worlds, an artifact that also lets us replay lands out of the graveyard. At 4 mana we've got some removal and ramp with the Death Sprout and Binding the Old Gods. We've got Vraskath that can also sacrifice our lands to synergize with a Gidrog monster and can be used as removal, Harmonize to draw three, and then a few four mana ramp cards with a Vastwood Surge, Migration Path, and Root, and Hagar Mauling, removal spell that can also be played as a land, Extinction Event as a versatile sweeper, and then at five mana, Hour of Promise, one of the better ways to find Field of the Dead, as we'll get to often make two zombies right away, can also potentially make zombies if we control a few deserts, We've got a Nissa Vital Force that can help us return permanence from our graveyard to our hand, so that includes lands as well, and we can very quickly reach the ultimate, which gives us an emblem saying whenever our land enters a battlefield under our control, we may draw a card, so that's another great card draw engine to have available. Primal Command can find different creatures to enable our synergies. Xenikar's Royal makes a 2-2 elemental whenever land enters a battlefield under our control, so kind of similar to Feel of the Dead. And then topping off our curve, we've got Primeval Bounty, which can gain 3 life whenever we play a land, or generate beasts when we play creatures, and plus 1 counters with non-creature spells. And that's also very good in combination with our next card, which is Bolas' Citadel, another way to play cards over the top of our library. And in combination with the creatures that let us play extra lands, we can very quickly go through the entire deck, so any additional life gain is welcome. And then Professor Onyx, another way to enable Gitrock Monster by putting lands in the graveyard with the plus 1 ability, so that can often draw 2 cards, and then make Craft can also gain us some life back and a nice edict effect with the minus three. And then I'm not going to waste time going over all the lands since we're playing pretty much all the lands that are available and Feel of the Dead is by far the most important one. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play facing Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. So it could be some sort of mill deck, but uh, yeah, we've got a fine hand. Probably a lead with Deserts, and then can play a turn to either a Cobra or Mindstone, which will ramp us into a Root. And our opponent's playing a Mill deck, Mill Sylvan Wild Hydra. Even if they Mill Field of the Dead, we still have a few ways to replay it out of the graveyard. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll go with the Cobra. Has the highest upside if it sticks around. Opponent's got an Into the Royal to bounce it, that's fine. So it's not going to be quite as explosive as it could have been, but still going to be pretty nice here as we can replay Cobra, play Lance, and play Mindstone. Or we could Into the North, although... Yeah, I guess uh, Into the North is fine here. Wouldn't be able to make use of the extra trigger from the Cobra, but that's okay. And then next turn, could already play Gitrog Monster if we want. Chasm also provides a forest for Garenbrick to come into play untapped. Opponent passes with three mana available, so most likely holding a counter spell. So how do we want to deal with that? Just generate a lot of mana so we can more easily replay Gitrog Monster if it gets countered. So... Can play my fetch lands. Don't have to sacrifice it quite yet. Play Roots, see if that resolves. It does. Get a Guild Gate and a land we don't have yet. Make some mana. So if I were to fetch, I can still play Get Rock Monster. And if it gets countered, I can most likely replay next turn anyway. Part of me wants to save Fable Passage until we play Gitrock Monsters, so we can draw an extra card right away. But just in case they don't have a counter, this seems pretty strong. Alright, Gitrock Monster gets neutralized. Fair enough. And Castle Garenbrig especially is going to make it easier to replay it. Opponent plays a Storm Tamer and passes once again with three mana available. So we'll play the Castle. Blast Zone, a nice way to clean up Storm Tamer and Apprentice. But it's better once the Gitrock Monster is in play, as we'll get to draw an extra card with it. So 
Yeah, we'll replay Get Wrong Monster using our castle. And that resolves. Can play an extra land. And now I could blow up my Blast Zone on one, which will also draw me a card. Find a Sword Tooth. And we can hit for two. And now we've got more lands to combo with our Gidrock monster. Elder Hall comes to mind. Opponent cycles Supreme Will. So yeah, that wasn't enough to counter Gidrock monster as we had three mana to pay for it. So our opponent's just gonna cycle it instead. And now we're off to the races. Just wanna start drawing as many cards as possible. Sanctuary can get back into the Royal. And Jace can draw into it. And that also draws with the Gidrock monster, so they needed to mill us to draw the into the Royal, but that also drew us an extra card. And now Bolas' Citadel threatens to take over the game. So, opponent's in a pretty tough spot. Sometimes we want to put a stop on upkeep in case we want to use a land before having to sacrifice it to the Gidrock monster. Didn't seem necessary here. And yeah, we've got an embarrassment of riches here. Vorinclex seems like the most backbreaking play we can make. And I can even play a Mindstone first. I've got an extra land drop available, so might as well. Scavenger Grounds doesn't seem necessary. But yeah, I can't really go wrong here either way. Can still play Sortooth thanks to the extra mana from Vorinclex. We've ascended and we're gonna take out Jace. Alright, so we're pretty far ahead on board. And we still have a Bolas of Citadel in hand, which by itself can win a game. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, just too far behind. And Vorinclex is going to make it so they won't be able to cast many more spells. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against a Muxus. And uh, Extinction Event is nice interaction to have available. Our hand's pretty slow, though. I would really like to find some cheaper ramp, so I'm still going to mulligan even though Extinction Event's one of our better cards. This is a much better hand. And yeah, I'll shock myself to play Reclaimer. We'll eventually find Field of the Dead. Can block a Torch Courier. Play Mindstone, next turn Sirtooth. And the turn after Gidrock Monster. Tin Street Dodger can activate to get past the Reclaimer. Not the scariest start from the Goblin deck. So we can play Sortooth. And then. If I play Double Swamp, I can still activate Reclaimer. Sacrifice one of those regular swamps to get Feel of the Dead. Okay, Cranko can be quite scary if that gets going. But Gidrock Monster is going to be a formidable blocker. So get our field, and hopefully the zombies will outclass the goblins. So time for Gidrog. And we should be able to play all three lands out now. And make our first zombie. Sortooth has ascended, so can now block as well. And we'll pass. 
put a stop on upkeep in case we want to use our lands before sacrificing them. Chandra can ramp into Muxus next turn, but not enough to take out any of our relevant creatures. So it's just gonna deal two damage. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, I mean, we've got an active Field of the Dead already. Can use the Reclaimer to find all sorts of utility lands, including potentially the uh, Black Desert to take out Krenko. So we had a lot of options available here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against a Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. What do we think about our hand? It's pretty slow, no early ramp. I think I'm gonna ship it back. This is a bit better. Roots will help us underway. And then uh, Hydra, a nice way to find Field of the Dead. No two mana ramp cards, but can't always count on those. So we're putting a blue red historic deck with a turn two cold steel heart. And we get to play our excavator. Which does synergize well with Vraska and Gitrock Monster. Joyra pass a turn. We can take out Joyra with Putrefy, Vraska's not gonna work, or we can ramp with Root. Killing Jora does seem worth it. Since that's going to draw the opponent a lot of cards otherwise. And we'll hit for two. And then next turn we can maybe root. So five mana total. And a gold span dragon, yeah, that's a good one. Hydra does eventually block it, but that's gonna take us a few turns to set up. So we'll get a gate, and swamp seems fine. So they could already replay Joyra and potentially combo off. And Dalakos to synergize with equipment. But can also just tap for double colorless on artifacts. And Temporal Sundering, letting the opponent take an extra turn, bounce this excavator. Yeah, that's uh, how things start getting out of hand. Immortal Sun shuts down Vraska, pumps the team. And we're down to nine. So I'm gonna need Hydra as a reach creature here to stand a chance. Find our fields. But is it too little too late? Immortal Sun draws the opponent an extra card. Yeah, the difference a two mana ramp card can make. Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger cast, can exile Field of the Dead and Hydra. Yeah, there's not much we can do against that. Can chum block, but. Can't even replay fields because it got exiled with Crucible and Excavator. So, yeah, hats off to our opponents, not much we can do here. Can play Oracle, see what we draw, but we're dead to the Goldspan Dragon. And uh, don't have any answers in hand currently, I guess Harmonize. Can maybe find one, but yeah, GG's. One's gonna turn the creature sideways, get a couple triggers, but the damage has been done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against the Groom Gully. So red-green, pretty aggressive. Our hand's fine. 
Probably gonna play tap line on turn one. To ensure that we can cast a turn three regrowth. And then another tap lands, plus a reclaimer. No shortage of ways to find Field of the Dead between Reclaimer and Hour of Promise. And there's Grom Bully. So what do we want to play this turn? Regrowth or Swordtooth play an extra land? Kind of like Swordtooth. And then maybe keep the regrowth until after we play Get Rock Monster. Beetleback Chief, pretty nice follow-up to Grumguli. Lots of power and toughness for just four mana. So we can Hour of Promise. Only have the one extra desert to go with it. But uh, yeah, still seems worthwhile. And then we'll get fields plus... What else do we want to get is a question. Maybe a fetch land is always good. So, Fabled Passage, Field. And then next turn we'll be able to fetch, make an extra zombie while enabling Get Rock Monster 2 potentially. We have an active Swordtooth that can now block. And the ground is nicely stalled, although Goldspan Dragon gonna fly over. Okay, so step one, play Gitrock Monster. And do I keep Cryptic Caves untapped? Probably just gonna cast a Roiling Regrowth. So I'll tap that to keep more colored mana available. Can fetch. Draw a card, find a Cobra. So, can rolling regrowth. And get some more lands. And draw with a Gitrog. And that's sprout an answer for the Goldspan Dragon, so that's good. Alright, do I want to attack with a Sword Tooth? I don't think I do. But soon we want to start attacking with our zombies. Goblin Gang Leader making more tokens. Gold Span gets in. Down to 12 we go. Put a stop on upkeep in case we want to activate any of our lands. Can maybe activate the cryptic caves and then sacrifice a land we tapped to use the cryptic caves. Hydra for three. So can potentially grow if it's dealt damage. So activate cryptic caves. Draw with a Gitrog. And then I can sacrifice the tapped forest. All right, no shortage of card draw here. Draw for turn. Kick things off with a Cobra. Can Roots. Make some zombies, make some mana. Can that sprouts? Opponent's got a snakeskin veil to protect. Uh oh. That could be bad. So, play Grove. And then if I play Forest Untapped, don't know how many land drops I have left to be fair, but uh, I think this is our last land drop, so I could still activate Reclaimer I suppose, even with the tapped one. I 
I guess we still have a land drop left, so I can harmonize. Draw three and try and find an answer for this dragon. Extinction event will do. And then are we attacking with our zombies yet? Too many good blocks for the opponent, I think. So we'll pass. Alright, let's see if we're dead to the dragon, or if we get to untap. Migration kicked, makes a bunch of tutus. That's fine. Opponent's down to one card in hand, so if we can deal with the dragon, we would be stable. And if we extinction event on odds, we get to keep all our zombies. Is there anything I want to do with the Gitrock monster in upkeep? Doesn't look like it's... Alrighty. So I want to make sure we have extra land drops first with monster and sword tooth before pulling the trigger. Mails from Pulse, also good. So I guess I can just draw the Pulse and then not have to Extinction events. That seems like a cleaner solution for the Dragon. And our opponent concedes. Once we dealt with the aerial threats, we had ground superiority. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against a pirate deck. Our hand is probably too slow. This also doesn't do much. This is a little bit better. And then probably gotta get rid of intervention since we already have Field of the Dead in hand. Turn two, we have Heartless Act. Still missing double green for Harmonize. Yeah, I'll probably keep up Heartless Act still. And then next turn play Tap Desert. Opponent off to a slow start, maybe missing red mana. Alright, can play Dryads and then still play Desert afterwards, assuming it resolves. Opponent's thinking about it, and fires off Counterspell. So we won't be able to harmonize next turn. Dried also would have fixed our mana. Alright, plays Admiral. So now we can harmonize. Find some more ramp cards. Back at Brass, we can Heartless Act at some point. No fire, no and Grath forces a discard. Let's go with uh, Scavenger Grounds. Although Grounds, I guess, could count for an Angrath Ultimate to an extent. So I could play Gitrog. Feels kind of vulnerable to removal. But it is a way to start pressuring Angrath. Alternatively, I can play Crawling Barons, which can also pressure Angrath. And play Kicked Grow, which lets me play Cold Steel afterwards. And start generating a bit more mana. And of course, Zombies. Are very important too. So we want... Snow-covered forest and regular forest will do. And Cold Steel Hearts on black. No and Grath gonna plus. No steel. Discards a land. Cryptic Cave's a good combo with the Gitrog monster too. Finally see some pirates. To join back at Brass. And the double block seems fine. If they have a removal spell, I get to resolve Gitrock Monster and kind of take it from there. 
Poisoner for Death Touch still trades. But a Malakir Rebirth is gonna bring it back. Okay, so your opponent's down to two cards. And we have all the tools we need here to take over. It's so time for Gitrog. Play some lands. And then I can still regrowth and cast Heartless Acts. This will also draw a card. Okay, and we'll pass a turn. Can also sacrifice Cryptic Caves to draw extra card with Gitrog if we don't feel the need to kill the Admiral. It's gonna steal Gitrog Monster to maybe set up an attack or maybe sacrifice it, we'll see. Do I want to kill this in response? I guess we can wait. Captain's Hook. I see, so they can unattach the hook from Gitrog Monster to then kill it. That's fine, we've got a lot of mana. Let them attack if they want to, just to get rock monster. So it's gonna die regardless. Question is if I want to take 9 damage or jump with 2 zombies. I guess we'll take the 9 damage. Now another thing I could do, I suppose, is if they try to move it to a creature, kill that creature in response. Because then I think the equipment stays on the Gitrog. So that would be a way to save it. Alright. So that worked. We get our Gitrog back. And then probably should have gone full control to make use of Cryptic Caves, but that's alright. Okay. Play Field of Ruin. Maybe sang the Cryptic Caves now. Azusa's excellence. Probably don't want to tap my Crawling Barons. Make some more zombies. Can also activate the Deadlands. And uh, yeah, we control the Captain's Hook now, so get Rock Monster as Menace. And uh, can maybe activate my Crawling Barons. And we should be able to take out Angrath. Is this enough? Should be. Now once the opponent moves the hook, of course we do lose the Gitrock monster. For now, I think uh, maybe activate Field of Ruin, trigger Gitrock once again. Or we can use Enclave, which is also fine here. So we're going to move the hook. We'll draw. And get rocked down. No shortage of mana to replay it. And then we can cycle a desert next turn, which will also draw an extra card. So replay Gitrog, don't want to tap my Field of Ruin. And don't think we need to use if there are Deadlands, or do we? Yeah, I don't think we do. This seems fine. And our opponent has seen enough and packs it up. Always takes a bit of fiddling once we 
take over and want to make sure to keep the correct lands untapped. But yeah, Git Drop Monster plus Field of the Dead is definitely a powerful combination, and there's no shortage of ways to find our Field of the Dead, so most games will end in zombies taking over, but even without them we have other ways to go about it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.